Hello everyone and welcome back to another outdoor adventure. Now today I haven't headed anywhere particularly exotic or remarkable, just one of the various local bushwalks in my area, but there are still plenty of opportunities to see some truly fascinating creatures, so let's get started. Brisbane has recently been at the mercy of some rather significant deluges, and the resultant surge in fresh plant growth provides an abundance of food for the many inhabitants of the undergrowth. And few are more voracious than Balanga irregularis. This already sizeable individual is still only a juvenile, and provided it survives the next couple months, it will grow into the largest grasshopper species on the continent. In order to grow, they molt, and when they approach maturity, wing buds become visible on the animal's back. For this one, only a single molt remains until adulthood. And here is a fully grown Valanga irregularis, now with well-developed wings that allow the insect to undergo short bouts of flight, often jump-started in a very literal sense by the grasshopper's powerful back legs. Nearby sits an echo of the grasshopper's younger self, its final molt hanging lifelessly amongst the foliage. Grasshoppers aren't the only spring-loaded grazers here, so too are their distant cousins, the katydids. And this is a katydid with a name every bit as spectacular as its appearance. Epipitatha trigintaduogatata. The species epithet trigintaduogatata means 32 spots, referring to the number of black spots peppering the katydid's wings. Epipitatha are among the most glamorous katydids in Brisbane. But there is another species that can be found here, that I at the very least would venture to say is one of the most remarkable insects to occur anywhere in the country. Its appearance, at least upon a cursory glance, is a good deal less flamboyant than the likes of Epipitatha, and it can be difficult even for a practised eye to discern one amidst the dense, tangled undergrowth. Meet Acropisa reticulata a rather widespread but infrequently encountered species that most often occurs at higher altitudes, hence the common name Mountain Katydid. The populations around Brisbane, however, seem to be something of an exception, inhabiting areas of bushland that aren't particularly elevated above sea level at all. These, in particular the bulbous-bodied females, are not exactly the most mobile of animals, like, we're not talking funnel web spider levels of athletic uselessness here, but still enough to make them rather vulnerable to attack. And thus, it pays to have a defence, or in this case, multiple defences. The first is pretty straightforward, cryptic coloration. Shades of grey and brown help these katydids blend in with their surroundings. But should that fail, Acropisa has another trick up her sleeve. Lifting up her dull, wrinkled wings, she reveals, in the blink of an eye, a breathtaking display of vibrant colours. Bright coloration is often reason for predators to be wary of the animals sporting them, for they frequently advertise the presence of powerful toxins. But this isn't the case here, for Acropisa is entirely harmless. These warning colours are merely a bluff. But the sudden appearance of such a spectacular display is nevertheless more than capable of startling a predator, or at least make it hesitate for long enough that it affords the insect ample time to escape. Adult female Acropisa, like this individual, are easily recognisable on the basis of their distinctive bulbous shape. Rather predictably, they are completely incapable of flight. The males, however, are a different story. This is a juvenile, found in very close proximity to the adult female featured before. Though not yet mature, it is easily identifiable as a young male, for he possesses two pairs of wing buds, which will eventually develop into fully functional wings. Female Acropisa possess just a single pair of wings, which are, as aforementioned, completely and utterly insufficient when it comes to the task of lifting her hefty ass into the air. Acropisa, like many katydids, are peaceful plant eaters, 
ambling through foliage and grazing at their leisure. But the katydids are an extraordinarily diverse group of insects, and there are some that have a very different way of life. With its diminutive size and cartoonish eyes, this Ostroflugus doesn't seem like much of a menace. And to us humans, it most certainly isn't. However, if you're another insect, then those googly eyes may very well be the last thing you see. For Ostroflugus is a hunter, and one of the telltale signs is its legs. The front two pairs are lined with spikes, a feature common among predatory katydids, and they are used to restrain prey while the katydids' powerful mandibles tear into it from above. Its strange rocking motions, while they may make the insect appear to be um, a little bit drunk, are actually a very effective means of masking the katydid's movement, heightening its resemblance to a leaf swaying in the breeze. This allows it to hide itself from both predators and prey alike. But carnivorous katydids like Ostroflugus are far from the only predatory insects that abound in Brisbane's bushlands. Other miniature hunters patrol the trunks of trees, and just like the killer katydids, are armed with lethal spiked forelimbs. One of the most common is Silphina, a type of mantis. While many mantas are relatively clumsy walkers that rely principally on ambush tactics when hunting, Silphina are extremely fast on their feet. Their legs are laterograde, like those of a huntsman spider, and they can scuttle around the tree trunks they inhabit with incredible speed. Silphina are typically very skittish and difficult to film and it was a rare treat to be able to get up so close and personal with this uniquely cooperative individual. Similar in appearance and habit is this Gyromantis krausii. It too is a fleet-footed, tree-trunk scaling extraordinaire, and its camouflage is even more impeccable than that of Silphina. Even its eyes, often a dead giveaway in nature's perpetual game of high-stakes hide-and-seek, are superbly disguised and the numerous bumps and spikes along its body serve to obfuscate the animal's shape, helping it blend seamlessly against the bark of the trees it inhabits. Gyromantis are allegedly predators of stink bugs, which are common co-inhabitants of the eucalypt trunks they call home, though there isn't exactly a wealth of information out there concerning these strange mantids, so I can't really elaborate much on that. But insects face more threats than just other insects. There are many other predators in the undergrowth, and among the most numerous, certainly some of the most crafty, are the spiders. And there are precious few insect death traps more expansive than the enormous golden webs spun by Trichonephala. In stark contrast to the well-camouflaged mantids and katydids, laying low and remaining unseen was never a priority for golden orb weavers. The impressiveness of the webs, with all the beauty of a summer sunrise and the intricacy of a... I don't know, I'm just trying to sound poetic here, is rivalled only by the splendour of the spider that weaves them. Lethal as they are to flying insects, Trichonephala are essentially harmless to humans, no matter what a certain cowboy cosplayer says, and have an extremely passive disposition, with their typical response to disturbance being to flee to the top of their web. Some spiders have taken a different approach to web architecture. This Dendrolycosa icadia can't pull gold out of its ass, but its web is impressive in another way. At first glance, it appears to be a chaotic mess of tangled silks strewn with dead leaves, but closer examination reveals that there is method behind the madness. It is a complex, three-dimensional structure that provides the resident spider with protection on all sides, and at its centre is a funnel-shaped retreat within which the spider shelters. While each spider occupies its own web, it's far from a rare sight to see numerous individuals setting up their home sites in close proximity. Oftentimes, a single small tree may host several of these remarkable arachnids. And nor are Dendrolycosa the only spiders to add a third dimension to the art of web building. 
Sartophora exanthematica have similar habits, including a tendency to incorporate fallen leaves as part of the shelter, among which the spider itself, with its odd shape and typically orange to brown coloration, blends in exceptionally well. The spider spends much of its life hanging motionless and upside down, on the underside of its ball-shaped web, and, if disturbed, tends to seek shelter among the dead leaves suspended in the webbing. But when an insect collides with its silken snare, the spider springs into action. This female has captured what appears to be a small beetle, and is now proceeding to wrap it up, which nullifies the victim's defences and makes escape a near impossibility. Though I must say, this particular individual really doesn't seem to be taking any chances. Like, you've already wrapped up the beetle so tightly I can't even see it. I think you're good. No? Still wrapping? Seriously, madam, you probably could have spun a whole second web with everything you've used so far. Still going. Fine, I guess I'll leave you to it. So that just about brings a close to this video. Sorry if my narration seems a little bit weird, or well, weirder than usual, I guess. I have only just recovered from a cold, and my voice is still a tiny bit croaky. Anyway, if you enjoy this particular type of content, then there are plenty more of my outdoor adventures for you to check out. And if you don't want to miss out on any future uploads, then you are warmly welcomed to subscribe. So that's about it for me tonight. Thank you all very much for watching, and I shall see you again very soon.